in the audience. So there you can see we've got the Eurogan 2. As you can see, quite a few physical changes to the rifle. First, you've got that awesome big 700cc carbon fiber bottle. And part of the kit is a bottle adapter so that you can use any aftermarket uh, carbon fiber bottle with the Eurogan 2. Next, we also got the uh, biathlon cocking handle, which we've color coded to the stock. So, if you have a green stock, you get a green handle. If you have a black stock, you get a black handle. Or if beautiful red, get the red handle. One of the other improvements we made was uh, we the depinger kit for the plenum. Absolutely awesome. Uh, gets rid of that annoying twang whenever you fire the gun. Super excited about that. We also made a made a. Um, Modification to the hammer spring, we made it stronger, we gave it a, um, an extra hammer weight. Uh, this basically allows us to increase the uh, uh, regulated pressure so that we don't get valve lock and we can shoot at those higher velocities. Uh, the whole idea of putting a 700cc bottle on the rifle is so that we can get an increased shot count, flatter shot string, especially at these high velocities where we use a lot more air. A long video is probably about 40 minutes. Definitely, I'd recommend watching the entire video because at the end of the video, we're going to show you the test results uh, after everything was installed, as you see it here. So, watch the whole video instead of it. I find a lot of people skip through things and then they miss kind of um, important parts of other, whether it's the install or that people get bored. I know <laughs> we're in a, a very quick society these days, everything wants everything done rapidly. But it's worth watching the entire video. So please do that and uh, enjoy. See you guys how we installed the kit, what comes in the kit, and uh, stay tuned for that. So here we've got the new upgrade kit for African Air Ordnance uh, for the Eurogan 2. So first I'm going to just walk you through what all the different parts are for the upgrade kit. We've got our color-coded uh, biathlon cocking handle. So for if you've got a red uh, stock, you order the red one. If you have the green stock, you order the green one. If you have the black or common stock, then you'd order the black one. Next, we've got our hammer weight with our stronger hammer spring. We've got our depinger kit uh, that fits inside the plenum. We also have our bottle adapter because we're going to put, be putting a 700cc bottle on this rifle. Uh, so we get better shot count. Uh, the bottle does not come with a kit, just so you guys know. And uh, there's quite a few aftermarket uh, websites that sell the 700cc bottles. We also have the uh, regulator removal tool and then we have the regulator end cap plug removal tool so that you don't scratch it up, which we've done in the past when we're trying to use little pliers or circular pliers. To get. Then next we've got the mag kit. Uh, that's so that you can use uh, Javelin Mark 1s and uh, that are 40 grand as well as the Zane 40 grand slugs. This, the mag uh, plates just extend the depth of your magazine. We also have a full O-ring kit. Number one is for the regulator body. Number two, the regulator uh, end cap plug o-ring. Then we have the uh, plenum end cap outside o-rings. And then the plenum, number four is the plenum end cap internal o-rings. Number five, there's a little plug on the side of the receiver and that o-ring goes there. Six, seven, eight, and nine are all for the valve part. Valve body, inside the valve body, We've also got then goes over the uh, poppet at the top and over the valve stem. So we're not going to store any of the earrings because the rifle is still new, but it's just nice to have those as spares and so that you're not waiting once if an o ring does go, you're not having to wait to get a replacement. Next thing to do, we're going to tear down the rifle um, and install some of these parts. All right, the first thing we're going to do, guys, whenever you work on PCP rifle, Make sure that the rifle is empty. I've degassed this last night. I fired, dry fired it just to make sure that the plenum area was empty. So now it's the rifle safe to work on. So we're gonna turn the rifle up like this and we're just gonna remove the bottle. Just one thing, when it comes to like unthreading things, unscrewing things, I'm gonna speed things up so not to bore you guys. So we don't have a like six hour video. Next thing we're gonna do is the shroud. Okay, just gonna put that there. Next thing, we are going to remove the stock. Okay. Get the other side. Now we can just 
Ezt nem nagyon. Next thing we want to remove the two screws that are holding the scope rail on. Scope rail there. All right, now I've got this uh, plastic cover to remove. All right, next we want to remove this plastic cover. Flip it over. So now that screws removed, we just got to pull this off. So this can be a bit difficult because it's quite a part of it. Okay, so we're just going to put that right there. And now we have to take the barrel out. So just going to undo these. You don't have to remove these all the way out. All right, so the barrel just pulls out the front just like that. And we're just going to place that there. All right, next we've got to remove the cocking handle, connecting rod. Uh, best thing to do is to cock the rifle first when you do that. Just to give us some space. We grab screw here, we're just gonna undo it. And then you just want to unscrew this part here. So it disconnects from the back here. And then we're just gonna slide this out the back. Uh, push that forward. Now we've got to remove the little rod that connects the trigger to the trigger grip. So this is a split rod, it's a little split little pin here, <clears throat> very uh, similar to what you get on remote control aircraft. And so we're just going to pull this rod out. All right, so now we've got our two halves. This little o-ring fits in here just so you guys know, so if it drops out, it makes the cocky handle snug up uh, and it fits over the barrel, so we're just going to leave that there. So this is your plenum. Okay, uh, O-ring number five, which I was pointing out was to this plug over here. So, O-ring number five goes, you just unscrew that and there's a little O-ring on there and that's where that would go. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this off the plenum. And it's very important to count your rotations because if you get the space wrong then nothing fits when you... Uh, um, this gap here, if the gap is not correct then your cover won't fit and your stock won't fit on the rifle correct, correctly. So the best thing to do is to hold your plenum tube and simply just unscrew this and then you're going to count. So that's one. Alright, so there we had 11 turns. So when I was talking about the inside o-ring which is number four that fits right there and the number three o-ring will go on the inside would fit into the receiver but we're not going to be taking that out there okay put that there so the first thing that we're going to fit into the ear again is we're going to fit the deep hanger so we're going to grab the two parts of the two and put the o-rings on okay just like that and just like that. So how these work is you're going to fit them inside the plenum tube just like that. Okay. Right there. So the one goes in like that. And then it's important there's a curve on that side. And it's important that the curves, so when you place it in for, into the tube that the flat side goes in first. And then you reverse it on the second one. So that just goes inside there. Okay. So now that the ping is installed, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the hammer spring with the uh, hammer weight. Um, so one thing that you will notice on your rifle, you get this noise when you, if you have your rifle going, you hear this noise. And that is because of the design. So the hammer has free travel here, up and down, where there's no contact with the hammer spring. So what we've done by making this longer is that the hammer stays in contact with the hammer spring longer, so it's giving it more of a, stri a positive strike, and you don't get this, you don't get a lot of this travel and noise. If you if you have a year again, you'll know you'll hear this quite often. Um, and so, part of that design was to not just add weight to the hammer, but also to add more contact, so the hammer the, the hammer spring is actually pushing longer in the travel. So you're not going to get 
you still get it very slightly, but you're not going to get this annoying noise here. So next thing, we just got a, there's a little locking grub screw. We just want to remove that. Okay. Well, we're not remove it. We're just going to just undo that. And then we're going to remove the hammer spring tensioner. So uh, there's your factory spring. So now you can see there's a difference between the two. Okay. So the only thing we're going to use off this is we're going to take this little plastic spring. So we're going to remove this little piece of plastic here because we're going to use that. Okay. I'm just going to put that down. And we're going to install it on our new spring. Okay. Just like, just like that. So you can see there's quite a difference between should I put it that way between those two. So next time we're going to store this into the frame, the receiver block. All right, so let's screw that in. So when you first install this in, you really want to just make a good flush right there, and then we want to lock it up. All right, so now that we have this hammer spring with the hammer weight installed, you can see that this tr the hammer doesn't have as much back and forth free travel. It doesn't make those loud clicking noises. Uh, that's quite annoying. Um, also what happens is now when you fire the gun, the spring is actually pushing the hammer, has more push on it because it doesn't just stop like where it stopped before. And so that's why you don't have that free travel. So it's actually a lot better, especially when you're running your rig at higher uh, pressures. Um, so yeah, much better. All right, next thing I just want to show you guys how, as you guys can see on this plug, and you can see the scratch marks. That's from when you slip with the, um, with the when you use those little like needle nose pliers and you, you slip, you can scuff that up quite badly and I have done that. So we came up with a little tool um, that has four little pins that match these four little pins. And it just sits in there. So now you can just simply use that to unscrew. There is a little socket uh, Allen key there, just in case it's very, very tight when you first open. You can use that to give you leverage. All right, so there's your plug. And the O ring for the plug sits right in here. Okay. And that would be number two O ring right there. So next thing I want to do is. I'm just going to show you, we're going to take that O-ring out, obviously. Well, we'll come up now. Next we want to do is we want to pull this regulator out. So we made a little regulator too. It just screws into the front just like that. And okay. you just pull this out. And there you guys, that's how the removal tool you. And you can also use it to put it back. So what we do is we're going to spray this nicely with some silicone. And we just use the same just push it back in just like that so you can pull it out put it in and then all you do is simply unscrew it okay we'll put that back um and there's our o-ring it's the number two o-ring i'm going to put it back over that just so that we know so we give it a good spray and now we can put this back in And we use the tool now when it gets a bit harder because you know it's making contact with that o ring in there, so it's going to be a bit more difficult. Um, all right, especially if you, you are changing your uh, regulator on a regular basis for whatever size slugs you're using. All right, So the next thing we want to do is we want to put the cocking hand lever on. So we're going to bring these parts here, just like that. And we're going to unscrew the cocking, the factory cocking. Remove that. Okay, I'll put those parts there. All right, so next we're going to do the biathlon cocking handle. So we're just going to place the screw in here. And let me just turn this over quickly.
So the best way to do this is actually from underneath. Okay, we place our little allen key in here, all right? Put our bottom part of our handle on the top and we're just gonna screw it. You can actually lock tight these on. Um, because you don't want them coming loose. All right, so that's nice sometimes. All right, so now we have our red colored uh, cocky handle to match our stock. All right, next thing is we wanna join mates up the back receiver with the front receiver. Okay, just gonna play a bit of silicon lube. Now we gotta count these in. Okay, so now I've counted it back in and we've joined the front and the back receivers together. All right, next we're gonna put back the cocking arm link. So the threaded end goes on the receive, this receiver end and then the other part goes like this. So basically we're just gonna slide it in. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to thread it back onto the probe bolt here. So, and then right there. So now we've got this screwed in. Next thing we'll do, we want to tighten this little grub screw right here. It's quite important. Make sure it's there all the way. Tighten that down. So we just want to give it a bit of let it butt just there. Okay. So now we've got the cocking handle length back on. Next, uh, we're going to put this barrel in. Okay, so it's very important we're going to put this o-ring back here. And this o-ring sits right in front. So when we put the barrel in now, it's going to be quite important just to make sure that this o-ring fits over this barrel. Just like that. And push your cocking lever forward and it'll push that o-ring onto the barrel. So this is that little o-ring there creates tension so that this locks gets to a positive lock. Without that o-ring there, you get this is gonna be floppy. So now we're gonna do is we're gonna push our barrel in. And you see there's these indexing marks. So we've removed the one grub screw so that we can make sure that we have the barrel in the correct position. We kind of think it's in the correct place, but you want to just open the cocking lever and then we want to slide our mag in. Um, because if our barrel's too far in, the mag can't fit. It'll be a very tight fit. So <clears throat> the best thing to do is actually have, a bat, have the mag in place when you actually push this barrel in. So now we can see that the, barrel, the mag can move. So the mag is free. Now we make sure it's a nice snug fit. Let's talk in. So what I like to do is, when you first do this, just do it till it bottoms out, and then go and do the other side. Don't talk them down. All right. So now that we've just got those in, what we're going to do is we're going to just check this mag is still moving nicely. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to talk these down. So just give them a half turn. All right, so now we have all eight torqued out. Okay, move our magazine up the way. Okay, now, all right, next we're going to connect the trigger link. So we've got to get it in these little slots in the receiver right there. And this part can be a bit difficult. There's little so we'll break it. The spring fits in behind, and then we want to just need this little clip to go in. Okay, so there it's in. So there's our trigger. So if I want to decock it now, we just go test this. Uh, it releases nicely. Cocks nicely. It releases nicely. Okay. So that's now our trigger assembly. We assemble cock lever. Cocking handle, the connecting rod. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is want to put this plastic cover back on. Again, this kind of is difficult to get in, but it's important to get this right. All right. Next, we've got a. So we're going to we've got this cover on, and we're just going to push it down. Fix it in place. 
Alright, so now we've got the plastic cover, now we have to screw it back in. Okay, so it's that side down. Let's flip it over. Alright, so now we have all those screws in on the plastic cover. Next thing we'll do is we're we'll gonna put the scope rail back on. So we're just gonna hold the ruffle like us. Take our scope rail. Just give them a half a turn to bite. All right. And we're just gonna give this a bit of a spray. And next is our shroud is gonna go over. So there's our shroud on. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the stock back on. So we're just going to take our stock and I'm just gonna cut our stock down. Okay. I'm just gonna flip it over. Now we can talk the main screw yarn. Again, air guns you never really want to over tighten anything. Alright, so guys, so there you've seen how we replaced, we put in the depinger uh, kit. Uh, we replaced the hammer spring and the, with a hammer spring, new hammer spring and hammer weight. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to put this nice big 700cc bottle in. And uh, just so you know, this does not come with the kit and we don't sell these big bottles. Uh, but there's plenty of places online where you can order them from. Um, so first of all, our bottle o-ring goes on. And then we've got our other o-ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray this just like that. I'll press that there. And I'm going to get this bottle and we want to give it a nice dose of that. Okay. So we're just going to Screw the bottle adapter on. Just like that. And you can actually fit these hand tight. They don't need to be locked in there. Uh, but hand tight's not fun. Alright, next we want to install the bottle. So we want to put this o-ring in. Let's place. Trying to hold it in that little, inside the receiver there's a little machine, little uh, space for the o-ring and we, you know, when you're screwing this in we want to make sure that that stays in that little groove because if it hops up then you can actually punch the o-ring. So, let's get this in there quick. Alright guys, so there you've seen how we've installed the Deepinger unit, hammer spring uh, with the modification as well as the 700cc carbon fiber bottle. Let me just say again, it does not come with this kit. But the reason we made the adapters is so that you guys can put 700cc or any aftermarket carbon fiber bottles on. So I'm interested to see how a shot count looks with that nice big bottle on there. We've also installed the Biofon cock handle. That's a color-coded test lock. I think it's just a nice add-on. Um, and I'm gonna put a, Cut in a video of here how to change the mag plates out, and we'll do that now. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to install the modification for the magazine. First, we're going to remove the original plastic plate. Okay. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to take these spacers, and we've got to put one spacer by each of the, the holes. Okay. Sure they're all nicely in place. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the 
the plate. Push it down, just like that. And then what I like to do is I just like to take a, to make sure that each of those O-rings spaces is in its position. Next thing we're going to install the little screws back in. Right. Next we want to make sure that that's obviously moving nice and free. And we also want to just make sure that these the heads are sitting flush with the back of the magazine. So the best way to do that is to put it on its side, do a couple of turns, just like that, just like that. Because if the screws protrude, then what you find will happen is that it won't insert into the rifle. Okay. So that is how you do install the mag modification plate. All right. So I've got some Zane slugs with me here, and these are 40 grain. Just to demonstrate to you guys, the reason that they don't fit. So here's an original mag. And we will index it. We'll put it put around it. Now we go to go load. You can see the mag cannot index further back than that. The slug is just too long for the original, the way the mag is set up originally. Now with the mag modification, we can slide around in there. Now we can move on to the next round and the next round. And these are all 40 grain Zane slugs. So, as you can see, if I I'll push this slug out, make indexes, no problem. So that, guys, is the mag modification for the upgrade kit. All right, guys, so there you have it. So now you've seen how we replaced the factory bottle, factory cocking handle, and the factory hammer spring and its guard. Um, and also we add in the deep hanger. Um, these kits are now available at AfricanEngelons.com. Uh, I think the next thing to do is we'll take it on the range, we'll test it out, we'll see how, how shot count looks, how it's shot string looks, I should say, um, and see if, you know, because we are shooting at higher velocities and we want to see if we can't, having a bigger bottle, we're not going to get a nice flat, flatter shot string and a lot more shots at higher velocity. All right, I got to load, load up with Zane 33 grains, uh, 217 size. I'm going to shoot three mags, uh, so if you guys can fast forward this, uh, but just want to see what the shot string is like over three magazines, which is 36 shots. So, let's shoot. I say this biathlon cocking handle is so much better. And it's so nice having that annoying twang gone every time you fire the gun. Sounds like an absolute Rolls Royce now. Absolute beauty. Seems to be grouping okay. And the numbers are looking good. Alright, so there's mag number one. Mag number two. And target number two. Wow, just loving this cock and handle. Absolute pleasure. And these Zanes, oh boy.
is like a perfect combination. Nice chuck consistency. Pretty awesome. It's mag number two. I must say this rifle loves these Zanes 33 grain. Alright, let's do mag number three. Absolutely freaking amazing. Guys, this is like a Rolls Royce now. Uh, sounds amazing when it shoots. Accuracy is just unbelievable. The numbers, I mean, that's 36 shots, uh, well, well over a thousand feet per second. Uh, absolutely, I think we can say that this rifle could definitely compete with the Panthera. Um, I don't see an issue, especially with the way it's set up at the moment. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I must say the Depinger unit, uh, it does reduce the velocity just very, very slightly, just so you guys know. But where we have the rig setting at the moment, the sound of the gun is absolutely amazing. It just, I haven't heard a gun sound so nice, especially at that power level. Unbelievable. Guys, the upgrade kits are now available at AfricanAirWardens.com. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day.